Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another particular live webinar. I'm Daniel Morbach. Today, my colleague Janove and I are joined by Trykve Lorenzen. He's a production debugging wizard at Proteria. He will show us how you take service insight in your organization to the next level. And in case, if you haven't already answered the poll that is currently presented on your screen, please answer the poll. Another thing that I would like to add here, please feel free to add questions with the Q&A feature of this webinar at any time during the three quiz presentation. We'll answer them as we see fit at the end of the webinar. So Trykve, let's get started. Hello and uh, welcome to this webinar by Trykve Lorenzen from Proteria uh, called Share the Insight of Service Insight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give you a quick introduction to the particular platform. Uh, it's created by a particular software, uh, previously in Service Bus. Uh, the platform consists of uh, several parts and three main parts, which is in Service Bus itself. It makes uh, everything work. It's the, the Enterprise Service Bus component written in uh, C Sharp. It's an open source project. Uh, with paid support. You can read more about it on the particular site. Um, and Service Bus came first, and then the need for uh, better monitoring tools emerged, uh, which led to the introduction of uh, Service Insight and uh, Service Pulse. Service Pulse is, uh, no, uh, sorry, and Service Bus is the brain of the system you could say, allowing all the parts to, to actually do their work. And let's move on to service control. Uh, service control uh, wasn't mentioned on the previous slide, but it's the heart of the platform. It's just there. You don't really see it in day-to-day uh, -day operations, but um, it takes and pumps all the messages from the different queues that are used by and service bus pumping messages into uh, service control, uh, storing them in uh, an embedded database with full text uh, index, uh, indexing. It can also pump messages back out in form of events telling about failed messages, missing heartbeats from endpoints, and etc. And it uh, collects all the data from the messages flowing through the system as well. And it exposes those data to service polls and service insight for use by uh, the developers, first of all, and uh, also by other people. Um, here is Service Pulse. It's a uh, production monitoring dashboard. You get a quick overview of um, the, um, the health of your systems with endpoint heartbeats, failing messages, uh, when you have a failing or several failing messages, you can retry them and you can tell if the retry was successful or not uh, and more. You can set up custom checks and so on. It's a web-based UI. And then Service Insight. And it's a fantastic tool for in Service Bus developers. Absolutely. Um, you can view and search for messages, message handlers, uh, take a look at long running processes. As you can see in the image on, on the right hand side, uh, you have several types of diagrams right in, in the picture there. It's uh, showing the sequence diagram. We'll look more into that in the demo later. Uh, it really helps understanding how the system works. And it's all got on this nice uh, UI and full text search. But what's also interesting about Service Insight is that, um, we discovered new possibilities with this tool to improve daily operations, uh, support, and so on. Um, and also, very important as well, to share all that imp important information that is flowing through the system. So, it's more than a developer tool it's, uh, it can actually be really helpful for others as well. Uh, I mentioned support earlier and um, 
can we leverage this, the power of Service Insight to ease support? Well, um, from our uh, experience, definitely. And what about the decision makers and the, the people that are not so technical? Service Insight helps them understand how the system works and allows them to make better decisions and feedback to the developers. So um, how is it, all this working in practice? Oh, before we d dive into the technical details and the demos and the tools, I'd like to give you some uh, background and some history about us first. Proteria, the company I've been working for since um, early 2000. It's a Norwegian company doing business in the Nordic countries in Germany. Customs clearance software since 1994. Transport administration software since the early 2000s. And uh, we've been continually modernizing our approach to creating software. From in-house solutions in the 90s where everything was hosted uh, on, -prem, on premises at the customer site with around the uh, database, communications had to be set up and so on. Um, moving to a thin client approach in the 2000s uh, with the database and the server communication with third parties and so on, everything happening from our uh, hosted servers. And very easy to, to install and move the thin clients around. Also upgrades is a lot easier that way. And we've been moving to software as a service in the recent years with our web UI. And also along that goes a continual, continually improving our developer skills and software developer delivery quality. Um, from a no source control, it works on my machine development in the 90s to full automation with build tests and deploy, uh, deployments running from new commits in a uh, source repository. So uh, a lot of manual tasks has been fully automated along the way, which makes everything a lot easier and we save a lot of time and also, of course, improve our uh, delivery quality. Okay, let's uh, meet the team. Meet uh, Jens, he's the head of support. Uh, he has some main concerns. Uh, his main concern is uh, to increase the quality of support to solve issues as soon as possible, well, how fast. Sometimes uh, we're able to, to solve issues even before the customer notice. That's the best case scenario, of course. Uh, and uh, the more issues support can handle without pulling in the dev team, the happier our customers will be and the more development can be done because it's not tapping into the developer's time. Um, so how can we help? Jens, uh, improve the quality of support. Of course, it's really critical to know how the system works at a high level at least, and what to tell the customers when something isn't working. Um, good systems will, will help with that. Monitoring tools like Service Insight with great graphical UI to help understand what went wrong, why, and what could potentially be a solution. Uh, service control integration, it's also important with error reporting tools such as, as uh, Rollbar. Uh, we'll come back to that a little bit later. And the key is to get quality information as quickly as possible to the support persons, or even better, directly to the customer. Meet uh, Eric. He's the CEO and co-founder of, of uh, Proteria. He's got some main focus areas as well. Of course, number one is to increase sales. And to increase sales, we need to have great products. And well, at least that's uh, the developer side of uh, the story. Of course, good marketing is also important. Uh, and to increase general customer satisfaction. Knowledge is power. And it's often a mismatch between developer and business language. And 
the general focus. Can service inside help in these areas? From our experience, definitely. By giving non-technical people a view into the system to make better decisions based on that information, um, it's absolutely invaluable. Um, this is me. Uh, I got really nice curtains in my office. <laughs> um, I've been an employee since 2001. I'm the head of development in Proteria. My main focus has always been uh, backend and business processes. Uh, but I'm doing full stack development regularly, although uh, user interaction and design isn't my strongest side. I'm really concerned about the quality of development and operations. I'm passionate about automation and removing time drainers in our daily operations. And also, what I think is very important is to increase the knowledge throughout the organization. Uh, we need to improve communication to better understand each other's tasks and challenges. And along with that, Service Insight is a great tool to, to teach um, and share information about our systems as well. Um, a little history. Uh, I, like uh, a lot of developers, I'm coming from uh, typical domain-driven design and layer architecture style code, but uh, I always felt we could do things better and especially improve in areas of reliability and maintainability. Um, also along with scalability and all those things that often comes up after a while when a system has been in production and it's growing, you start getting growing pains. So I was searching for a for um, solution for, for these problems. And then I rediscovered message-based architecture and, and service bus in particular, pun intended. Um, we learned about message-based architecture back in my university days using Corba back then. Uh, but now I had a lot of more experience to better understand the benefits. Back then it just seemed like an unnecessary complication really. Uh, I didn't really grasp the, the benefits of doing things in a message-based way. So, uh, we decided to, or more correct, I decided to try and service bus in uh, production. Uh, I decided to integrate and service bus into an existing system in a very small scale. Um, what a better way to evaluate a new technology than to introduce it into a critical business application to really let it uh, stretch its legs and see how everything's working out. Uh, it was a really small part of that uh, critical application, so it was easy to roll back if something went wrong. Uh, it was a mind shift going to eventual consistency rather than trying to force the world to be immediately consistent, which it, it really isn't. So um, basically all I did uh, in this first attempt was changing the uh, typical transaction script way of doing my code into separate messages with and service bus handlers. And of course, before I started, I had to convince the stakeholders. Um, getting the management on board was not that hard really. Uh, the scope was limited and they could understand the benefits if everything worked out as planned. They knew about the pain points as well. Uh, probably the biggest challenge was to change mindset, both for me as a developer and for the management. The real world is eventually consistent. Uh, some technical details. It was uh, based on the service before introduced in, uh, uh, yes, uh, that was introduced into this, uh, critical application doing customs clearances uh, in Germany, uh, introduced in the, in the back end there. Um, the main end result was to avoid sending emails multiple times if some part of the transaction script failed somewhere along the, uh, the processing um, and also to improve error handling. 
um, basically trying out the concepts in a very limited real world scenario. And as I said, change of mindset was the primary hurdle. A little code example, simplified, <laughs> very simplified really. But um, we had this one transaction where we tried to write a file to disk, which isn't transactional, of course. Uh, third party service, some web uh, API, send some info there, not transactional either. And if uh, we should send some mail, let's do that as well at the end, if everything else goes through. So what to do when some, some part of this fails? What is the most important thing? What about retries and so on? It's not good to send out mails multiple times, for example, if something fails. Um, and we just rewrote this to bus .send. send, just pass on all these messages to the bus. I set up uh, a handler for each uh, message and let uh, the messages be handled. Doesn't really matter what order it's handled in. And if some one of them fails, it can be retried later and everything will be back uh, and in a consistent way, even though it's not immediately consistent. Um, and also, what we learned here was that uh, the error handling was really a lot easier to reason about. Uh, typically, in the old way, we just logged some information to a file. Maybe you sent an email to to me at that time, or someone else in the organization sent by the login framework. But no, we didn't serve us. It was uh, well, uh, we set up um, automatic retries, which is included in the service bus uh, runtime, and we could also retry failed messages manually. And we also learned that in service bus delivered as promised. It also turned out to be very easy to integrate into existing software to improve or even extend the functionality. It's a lot easier to write robust systems this way. Um, I just mentioned automatic retries. And if it fails, it can be retried manually from service inside or service pulse. And it also incre increases the code quality and makes it easier to write single responsibility principle codes, um, which is really important actually. Um, and even in this limited test, it was clear that uh, this would really help us improve our uh, quality and uh, a lot easier to reason about the system as well. And debugging, DevOps, tools that make our life a lot easier. Service Insight and Service Pulse are just invaluable tools to keep track of everything that's going on. And a lot easier to respond to errors. And with messages, uh, the messages that are failed, they don't go just go away like it used to do in our um, previous applications. They are there. Uh, we can fix the bug if, there is, if it's a bug on our side. And then just retry the message when we deploy the new version. Uh, excellent way of uh, fixing the system. So the first test was successful. Um, and now my task was to convince the rest of our organization to embrace and service bus and its way of doing SOA in our upcoming big projects. So um, I carried on and uh, with a greenfield application, created a proof of concept application and arranged a walkthrough with uh, developers and representatives from support and uh, management. And Service Insight was used extensively to show how the system worked from a high level perspective. The whys and the reasons for breaking the system up into sagas with messages and handlers was code in detail from conceptual and transactional real world way of, of thinking about and reason about the system to in-depth technical details. Uh, I also spent quite a, a lot of time to make sure I had good naming for the messages and sagas, which I think are crucial for good understanding. Uh, it's worth spending some extra time on really. Well, what happened after this uh, session? I spent probably the better half of a day on this and there were some surprises really. Well, management, they were actually really delighted. Uh, they felt that 
some developers were finally talking sort of their language. They could reason about the system in ways that they had never been able to before. They could see the system working uh, while I was clicking through um, the buttons and you know turning knobs and levers and everything. And they could see the, the response of the system in Service Insight. So all thumbs up from, from them. Um, I also made sure I didn't spend too much time on technical details like choice of JavaScript framework, unit test framework, whatever. Uh, they couldn't really care less about things like that. They just want to understand why this is making the system better. And if it can increase our revenue, that's uh, their main concern. And also uh, support. This is great, Jens uh, said. I get a good understanding of how the system works. Uh, and then he popped uh, sort of a mind-blowing idea. Can we use Service Insight in support? I hadn't really thought about that for, uh, before and uh, a new idea was born. Um, probably, yeah, why not? Service Insight should be uh, really helpful in support as well, not just for the developers. So although it's quite technical in nature, uh, it wasn't too difficult to, to give support a list of messages and their meanings, and they could actually see it in the system and in the diagrams and reason about it. Also possible to, to do a, a retry by support for intermittent errors. Um, and it's possible to search for specific strings in Service Insight because it's um, backed by a free text uh, search index. And it's really easy to, to find um, and see the whole process of what's been going on with a, a Saga long running process in that way. You can just search by uh, a specific ID. Uh, and also it's possible to sort messages, uh, to find failing ones and figure out what went wrong. And even, as I said, retry the messages manually without even uh, telling the development group about this. Um, the developers, some mixed feelings really. Um, nah, what is this good for? Why can't we just continue calling methods in classes and having this big monolith like we used to? It's a lot of unnecessary complication uh, in here, isn't it? And we had someone that really understood this and they were delighted about uh, the possibilities and all the issues um, and service bus on the platform could help solve. And I just, I wish I could do this in our legacy systems, some guy said. And someone, someone were a little bit in between. Mm, I need to think this through, but I like the idea. And quite frankly, coming from uh, their point of view, it, at first it might seem like a little bit of oh, extra complication and it's not for the typical tutorial to do app to get something up and working quickly um, you have to understand the implications of all the, the the difficult aspects of doing uh, software development and running big systems and all the potential pitfalls for data inconsistency scaling difficulties how to handle error situations and things like that uh, but once you do, you really come to appreciate how this platform works. And um, based on the proof of concept application, uh, we got Proterra Fright. We got the green light from, from the organization to build on the proof of concept and make a, a real product ready to be sold and deployed for uh, customers. A uh, really simplified workflow is that order or shipping data coming into the system, either through the UI or uh, web API file uh, integration, uh, usually from web shops and accounting software mostly. Uh, integration and full automation becomes increasingly more important. And that's another area where and service bus really shines. Data flows both into our system and also back out to our customer systems. Uh, we just validate some data coming in, create booking at a uh, shipping company, uh, either through EDI or um, 
EDI file upload or uh, web API, depending on what the shipping company systems are offering. Uh, and then customer or customer write the labels, put the labels on the, the parcels and then send the parcels. And for Terrafight, the what's. Uh, it's our first system built with a service bus from the ground up. It's a hybrid single page, multi page uh, web application. It's a really ma major mind shift uh, from the typical request response and REST WCF based HTTP monoliths uh, that we come to, uh, to use a lot uh, those recent years before we started this. Uh, it still needs to communicate with our older systems through request response though, because we didn't port everything over to a service bus and message based architecture in one go. We still have older systems that are REST based. So, uh, but uh, and service bus really helps with that integration. Uh, Signal R uh, is used um, for fire and forget messaging and eventual consistency to keep the user updated about new events in the system. So it embraces fire and forget actions and eventual consistency in that way. It's a um, CQRS style because it's a separate write and read models through RavenDB. And then onto the tech stack, ASP.NET, MSC5, and then service plus five and six endpoints back end. Knockout JS plus, plus a lot so JS libs in the front end. Signal R, as I mentioned, um, really eases the, and improves the user experience. Uh, when the system um, handles some events in the backend, it pushes them up through Signal R to the client. Uh, it's got RavenDB as well, as I said, and some Node.js code for common uh, code that runs both on the client and server side. Okay, on to the demo. This is the system. Um, this is the search screen, uh, unfortunately, all in Norwegian. Uh, you can do some search up here. Um, let's just search for error. Yeah, there we go. These are some uh, packages or shipments, really, already registered. I'm just going to copy one of this and just open that one. Okay, uh, everything's uh, looking nice. There's no validation errors in here. Uh, I can just, oops, moving there. And then we get a validation error when the name hasn't been entered. I just re-enter that. It works fine now. Everything is nice and dandy. We got one parcel here with a weight of 10 kilos, uh, calculated price uh, based on what uh, the customer reports to the shipping company. So it's a pre-calculated price. It's not necessarily the final price. Uh, our users send this to the shipping company through this button here and boom. We just enter Visual Studio. Just take a look here. Uh, this is the, the Saga. It handles the booking process. And we just got a submit booking command here. Just gonna continue. Go back into the UI. Oh, that was quick. We already got the label. Mm, we can um, print the label like this. Put labels on the on the parcel and ship the the parcel with the shipping company. All working nice. And then I'm going to show you what happens when something isn't working the way it should be. I'm just gonna send it through this uh, search uh, overview here. We don't have to open the, the shipment to send it to the transporter, the shipping company. Uh, uh, as you can see, I created um, a shipment with a receiver with an error in the name. So I created a special little code path just for this to provoke some errors because the system is dead solid usually. So um, let's try that. 
And there we can see I have this special little test here to throw an exception. It's a ring booking exception. Uh, notice the naming here. Um, it's important to use uh, specific exceptions as well. I'll, I'll show you more about that later. Bring uh, bookings web services down. So the shipping company service is down. What to do? Okay, and we can see that here. It's got a, a warning in the log. And it will be automatically retried by a service bus. Well, it's still down. And then we got a failure with, uh, as you can tell by the red text here in uh, the console. So let's go over to Service Insight. Aha, we got a failing message. Ah, uh, well, uh, let's see what happens. Oops, sorry. There we go. I just uh, touched the sort button there. I wasn't supposed to do that. Uh, here we can tell from the web component. Passing on a validate consignment command first, then validates the consignment. Um, and then validation response uh, event goes up to the web through SignalR. Uh, just to set that uh, the shipment has been validated in the UI. I probably see that as well. Now it's got a waiting for label status right now because we already, uh, the Saga has submitted the booking, which fails in this case. So what happens? The customer, they are probably just waiting for the label. And after a while, the patients runs out, they call us uh, and tell us that hey, I, got an, I got a label waiting in queue. So what happens? And support can just go in here, take a look at this failing message. Oh, come on. Uh, what happens? Yeah, there you go. Uh, take a look at the headers of the message. Oops, sorry. And read that bring booking web service is down. Try again later. So uh, we contact the shipping company and then everything is back up and running. And I can just go in here, right click the message, retry message. Let's see what happens. Should be entering this breakpoint soon. The message is now being placed back uh, in the queue by Service Insight and should be retried. Yeah, there you go. Right, what happens next? Um, I just added uh, a tester to see if uh, the message has uh, been retried in which case I don't throw the exception anymore, which simulates that everything is working as it should. So it's uh, going through the log and we should see, yeah, there it's already ready for print. And then we got the label with, a, with error. Okay, it, uh, the retry was successful. And uh, I'm actually gonna quickly show you what it looks like in service pulse as well. There you go. You can take a look at fail messages. Here we, ha here we have the bring booking exception. And uh, we got three messages uh, that failed. Uh, from uh, previously and uh, the one I uh, just retried isn't there anymore because it's uh, gone through successfully, but this is how it looks. It was just add be added here as a fourth message if uh, one more should uh, should uh, should happen. Okay. 
that's about it, about uh, the use case and how Service Insight helps. We can also just do a quick demo of the free text search if the customer calls about a specific package or shipment. Uh, they give us this ID and support can enter the ID in the UI. And there we see all the messages uh, that have been recorded about this specific long running process. First, it's the, the booking. I'll show you the sequence diagram with the validation, then the submit of the booking, and then booking accepted event goes back to the UI to update the UI on the fly. And um, then it's a tracking processing endpoint comes in here, starting uh, the tracking for uh, for the shipment. And then it's uh, finished uh, with the tracking after a while. That's what happens in the booking process. Okay, that's the first demo. Then on to the tracking endpoint. After booking has uh, success, uh, booking has succeeded, a message is sent to a tracking endpoint to start up a tracking saga. The tracking saga sets uh, a timeout based on uh, different um, scenarios. Sometimes it's a, a short timeout if we expect a tracking message to come back quickly. Um, but usually it's um, about 24 hours because the tracking doesn't really need to be updated that often. At each timeout, it's sent a request to the shipping company's tracking API, and hopefully there will be some new information about where the shipment is uh, in the, the shipment process. So it, maybe it's been delivered at uh, um, the ship, uh, shipping company's terminal, maybe it's on uh, in transport, even been delivered or tried to be delivered to the, the recipient. Uh, new tracking events are handled by the Saga. The first tracking event of them all. First tracking event with parcel measurements. Um, the first tracking event tells the system that a uh, shipment is on its way. It might trigger buying a shipping insurance at the third party system uh, or notify the receiver that the shipment is on its way. Um, when the first tracking with package measurements comes in, um, we can do a price calculation to get the final price based on the actual measure measurements that the shipping company has uh, recorded. And um, maybe a, a tracking event will be a shipment return to sender, shipment delivered. Um, the shipment delivered can uh, be interesting to know about for the sender. We can send them an email or any other notification about that. The tracking continues until all parcels packages in a shipment has been delivered or end of validity of the booking, usually one year, depending on the shipping company's um, uh, rules. So let's go back to the tracking. I'm just gonna ship another package. Let's do this one. Send. We can remove this breakpoint now. Ready for print the label. It comes back really quickly. Now we print the label and we go back to the UI. And we can update the search. It's been uh, printed. This is what this status is telling us. Oh, it's in transport already. This shipping company is lightning fast. I want to deliver all my packages with these guys. It's been delivered. Uh, of course, no shipping company is this fast, but um, uh, I've just been injecting a, a fake tracking service for demo purposes. Um, so in real life, it would be just a little bit slower, but let's, let's go to Service Insight and take a look at what happened. Um, actually, let's do the search on this ID. Oh, yeah, it's just uh, one number up. Okay, after the accepted event, as I said before, start tracking for shipment command. We can actually see the saga. This is the booking saga. 
and then it passes a message to the tracking uh, saga, or more correctly, it's, uh, it's passing a start tracking for shipment command, which in turn starts up a new saga with tracking, bring parcels tracking saga. And here you can see that uh, the command is coming in, the timeout requested, 10 seconds. And then it's uh, continually calling update tracking for shipment command. And then a, a new timeout is set to do a new tracking later on to get updated uh, tracking information. And then it just goes on until it's been through all the, uh, the tracking statuses and been delivered. And when all the parcels has been delivered, the saga is completed. Yep, that's uh, the tracking saga. Uh, then on to some technical tips. I already mentioned a lot of these, but I like to reiterate them. Create specific exceptions, catch and rethrow in handlers. Uh, you could see that in, uh, no, here we go. In service pulse, the messages are, or the, uh, more correctly, the failed messages are grouped by exception type and stack trace as a default. Uh, so when you got uh, specific exceptions, it's a lot easier to, to know what happened, what went wrong. Uh, they are not just uh, generic exceptions and everything will be in one group. Uh, so it's a really good idea to, to create your own exception types. Um, then just catch them and, and rethrow in handlers. Um, you don't really need to catch them either. You can just let them pass through depending on the exception. Um, it makes it easier to figure out what went wrong and the grouping that I showed you in uh, service polls. And also make sure the developer team understands transaction boundaries, really important concept. Item potency, make sure that you can retry messages without side effects, really important as well. And it's uh, from my experience, something that uh, third party services are almost never concerned about. So you just have to tell them and hopefully they'll implement some item potency mechanism. Usually that you create an ID on your side and pass the ID on to the third party and then they have some logic on their side to, to handle those situations where they get the same ID more than once. And also the biggest mind shift of them all perhaps is to think eventual consistency. It's actually okay for the user to, to don't get immediate feedback from the web page they're on or the, or the UI, whatever type of UI it is. It's okay that they just know that something has been started and they know they have to wait uh, a little bit to get a response back. And it's a good idea to combine with excellent cloud-based error tracking services like uh, Rollbar that I mentioned. Then what about uh, deployments? Service control. Uh, you probably remember it's the heart of the system. Mm. It's uh, best practice from a particular software to do a single deployment of this one and then monitor multiple queues on probably multiple machines from that single deployment because uh, service control is quite resource intensive and, and it tends to slow down the production system if you run it together with where you have your endpoints running. Uh, service Insight and Service Pulse. Uh, we chosen to install that on a terminal server that uh, all the developers and support persons have logins to. Uh, it connects to the service control instance to get information about the messages flowing through the system and display that in the nice UIs that we've been uh, taking a look at. Uh, so in summary, support. It's been a lot easier to tackle with a tool that gives visual information about the system. Um, it's also important to mention that uh, using a good message-based architecture in the first place is really helpful. What about management? Um, they couldn't be happy really because 
the system has proved itself and it's constantly generating more revenue for us. Um, the management's, management has learned to appreciate all the issues that can be better solved with a particular platform, even though there has been an upfront investment in developer training and adoption time. And the developers. Uh, the developer team has totally adopted thinking the SOA done right way, um, preached by Udi Dahan, the founder of a particular software. Um, Actually, it's difficult these days to work with legacy systems or systems built using typical request response patterns. We are just constantly thinking, ah, oh, I could do this a lot better with the uh, answer bus. Remember, it's all about the people. Software is made by people for people. So let's share the information. Let's try to make everything work in a way that the people can reason about and understand. And it's important to bridge the gap between the different concerns in the organization and the different people, the different mindsets. Uh, between the developers, support and management, they all have their different concerns and trying to speak uh, a common language makes everything a lot easier. And Service Insight has helped us doing just that. So good luck, um, thanks for listening. We hope you found this interesting and consider using the excellent particular platform yourself. You can read more about it on httpsparticular.net slash service insight. Thanks for listening. Um, people, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the Q&A section and we'll give it a few, few seconds to, to wait for your questions if you have any. So oh. I, I have a question, uh, Tiger. And yep. do, you, do you actually bring service insight into like, meetings with, with management? Or yes. Do you actually do that? Yeah. Uh, I believe that was one of the reasons uh, using in service bus in the first place was such an easy sell. <laughs> and to get them on board on this, uh, they could see for themselves. I, you know, I showed pretty much what I did now in the demo, showing how easy it was to follow the system and keep track of the different parts and how each handler and message is handled in a separate uh, piece of code. And they could understand uh, the different difficulties with consistency uh, with the old style transaction script that I showed in the code example earlier as well. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it might look a little bit intimidating at first, but it's really helped. Hi, I have also a question. Um, so we heard people are using sometimes service insight screenshots of message flows to basically document the message flows in their software architecture diagrams. Do you use that as well or do, it, do you do it in another way? Yeah, um, really good you brought that up, uh, Daniel, because uh, I should actually have mentioned that in uh, the presentation because that's, uh, a uh, very typical way we work because uh, we are making these flow diagrams up front and then we can validate them with the output from service insight when the, uh, the systems have been uh, uh, programmed. So it's really a good uh, validation of, okay, is this working the way we planned or is there something we missed or yeah, you know, so um, and that's absolutely one way of uh, using service insight as well. There is a question from Niels. Yeah. Uh, I think the question is whether you are a software company or a transport service company with in-house developments. Uh, we are a software uh, company. Uh, but uh, what we are actually doing currently is uh, uh, we are sort of a shipping company for whatever we are selling the transport uh, of the shipments. Uh, and we are just passing the information on to the actual shipping companies. So we are just reaping some of the benefits of collecting all the information, uh, processing it and helping the customers to, um, to get a better workflow this way. Uh, so we actually invoice our customers for the, for the shipping costs. Does that answer the question? I hope. 
So that means you're basically you're selling this as, as software as a service then, right? Uh, pardon, you know what? Are you selling this as software as a service? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. So the idea is that uh, by taking care of all the communication with the shipping companies and setting things up through our um, deal or our shipping deal with uh, the shipping company, then it's a lot easier for the web shop owners. They don't have to take care of anything really. They, they can just start using our software. And, and uh, yeah, they have everything they need right from the start. They can be up and running in a minute more or less. Um, if they wasn't using our system or using the way we they used to do it in our old application, they would have to contact the uh, shipping company first, uh, get a credit uh, evaluation and set up the account, get an API key and so on and so on. A lot more uh, involved. Cool, I think um, if there are no other questions, uh... Oh, there's another question. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the question is if you have met any latency problems so far. Mm, no, not really. Um, the only problem we have met has actually been self-inflicted. <laughs> that we have um, done something wrong while programming and uh, placed too many messages on the bus. And that has uh, started quite a bit of latency on the server because the the bus has been able to chew along fast enough, so the the message queue has been filling up. Um, but it's not part of the platform; it's uh, totally on us. Uh, and what we have experienced is that uh, split parts of the system into different endpoints. Related stuff like tracking goes into one endpoint because it's, it, it probably has different requirements in terms of transactions. Uh, we don't need transactions in the tracking endpoint. It's not that important to get full consistency, for example. Also, uh, uh, there is no way to prioritize messages coming in. So if you have too many messages being handled by a single endpoint, you come into situations where really high priority messages aren't handled quick enough uh, because they're all queued with the same priority. And that's, uh, that's the only real issue we had. So we solved that by just splitting up into separate endpoints doing their job. And we have like the booking uh, processing is uh, absolutely highest priority. The tracking isn't high priority at all. So what happened uh, once when uh, we had a mistake was that we had too many tracking um, tracking commands into the system, so we, we had to constantly uh, go out to the third-party tracking API, which takes a bit of time, of course, it's uh, REST-based, uh, and that slowed the whole system down. So once uh, we split that up, there is no real concern anymore, because if the tracking goes down or it's some issues there, it doesn't affect the, the main use case of getting the labels and creating the bookings at the shipping company. Cool, uh, thank you very much. I think, um, well, it's time to wrap up. Uh, so thank you very much, Trikwe, for sharing this with us. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Uh, so the webinar was recorded and we will send a, out the link to all the subscribers of the webinar uh, so that they can watch this recording. Thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See you hopefully on the next webinar. Bye-bye.